What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. Today, we're going over the new game mode, Void Farmageddon. No, it's not that terrible turret defense mode. We're just actually getting quad loot from the Void Angels. So I made sure to put out this video later in the day, so we had plenty of time over the weekend to farm this. Uh, yeah, we're just going to go over all the stuff to get 4x loot from the Angels. Two Arcanes per kill, two Void Pinions per kill, which basically equates to like them dropping like 30,000 rep at once, basically, if you count, because the arcanes can be purchased for, for rep as well. Uh, we're going to go over all the stuff you can use to uh, mega farm. If you if you want to play this update, this is the farming strat for you this weekend. Um, yeah, so before we get into it, uh, another reason this video is coming out later in the day is because I streamed for about 12 hours yesterday and then about 11 hours the day before. Um, so I am taking a little bit of a break tonight, <laughs> but we're going to get this video out so you guys can maybe, you know, get some of these new really good arcanes, because basically every one of these new arcanes is really strong. That's why I'm saying, farm it up. Like, go do the, get, get, get some people together, farm it up. Um, so we're going to go over all the builds today. What you can utilize, the exact strategies utilized in this video are going to be giving you about two arcanes and two pinions at least. Uh, every like five-ish minutes if you have the gear we're using in this video, okay? Um, and, you know, the pinions, you're, you're going to have so many of them, you're never going to need to farm rep ever again, probably, unless you want like lots and lots of uh, Adorma Zone uh, decorations. You're going to have more rep and you're ever going to need to know what to do with and have every arcane set maxed out. Um, okay, so let's just get into it. We're going to start off, uh, like I said, we need to stream this all uh, live. So if you watch out the live stream channel, definitely do that. It won't be a stream tonight, but there will be a stream tomorrow. Um, and I'm looking at some new houses on Sunday, so probably not on Sunday either. But yeah, tomorrow for sure. All right, so Void Farmageddon. Uh, do this before it gets nerfed, honestly. It probably will get nerfed. So the, the main crux of this is that Necros Desecrate works on the Void Angel mini-bosses. And also, Mod Drop Chance Boosters work on the Arcanes. The Arcanes have a 20% drop rate at base from a, uh, a Void Angel. If you're going into the modes like... Actual Void Armageddon, there's a guaranteed, uh, it's called like an Angry Angel or something like that at the end of the couple waves. That Void Angel and Void Armageddon that's guaranteed spawn only has like a 5 or 10% drop rate for Arcanes. So for farming Arcanes, do not do Void Armageddon. Do Exterminate or uh, I think it's called Cascade. We're, we did Exterminate for the 12 hours and uh, it was it was good. It, it, it was kind of like the farming will never be this good ever again because it was that good. So what you want to do is you want to go on the steel path. That's why having really good gear is important for this video, guys. You need to have like some of the best stuff in the game, and you need to be able to uh, kill steel path stuff really, really fast. You also basically need to be ready to kill steel path, void angel shields, and acolytes. Did I mention? Oh, I forgot to mention acolytes spawn in this mission really fast for some reason. So it's also a, probably the best steel essence farm in the game too. Um, okay, so let's get into it. You're gonna want three necros, and you're gonna want one wisp. The reason you want three Necros is because, like I said, Necros loot ability works on the Void Angel. It's final death health gate stand thing. We're also bringing the Chessa Kubrow, which is going to, to potentially give you more loot, but it does not stack with Necros giving you three Arcanes. The most Arcanes you will get per kill is two from a single Angel kill. But you got to make sure you also are killing the Thrax enemies. The Thrax enemies, when you have... Uh, the Steel Path will have an increased mod drop booster as well, so they will drop Arcanes more often. And if you're really lucky and you get a mod drop booster from the sortie, it will become a 100% drop chance for Arcanes from the Void Angel. It's not guaranteed unless you have a mod drop booster on the Steel Path. That's 100%. And then with Necros, it's a 54% chance per Necros in your squad. So three of them together, you're basically always going to get the double the double drop. So as you see right there, that's two pinions, and also my, my, clan logo, or my channel logo is covering up. We got two Arcanes as well. And we got Steel Essence in, in about, like, I don't know, like four or five minutes. Uh, and I didn't even check the timer. And the way you can do this even faster is once you go to the elevator, have whoever's uh, hosting whatever click repeat mission, then have everyone roll out of the elevator, then roll back in, and it will auto-load the mission again. You'll be farming as fast as possible, and time is just going to fly. Time is just going to fly. So um, let's start going over some of the builds I'm going to recommend to you today. Uh, we got some serious hard-hitting gear here, so if you don't have it, don't worry, like, it is a little bit of FOMO, to be honest, but, um, you know, it, I wouldn't go out and, like, completely, like, bend myself over backwards to get these builds together. So, 
What we're utilizing here is we're actually utilizing uh, Molt on Necro. So we're actually using Regenerative Molt, but if you have a Wisp in your squad, you don't really need Regenerative Molt. So the reason we're using this is it makes you run faster through the mission. It gives you easy shield gates so you'll never die with Brief Respite, Augur Secrets, and Augur Reach. We're also using the Decaying Dragon Key to reduce our overall shields. So with this much energy, with this much shield restore from Molt, we will have a full shield gate on every cast. We're basically invincible because there's not going to be any enemies that will toxin damage in these missions. Um, before I get, go more into the builds, let's make sure we know which mission we're talking about here, okay? Just so there's no confusion. You're going to the Zeramon ship. Make sure you're on the steel path because it's got an increased mod drop booster. And you're going to Holoco per Perimeter. It can switch between uh, Grenier and Corpus. So what I'm going to recommend to you is you want to bring a Kuva Brahma. Uh, whatever elements you got will be fine. I have a Radiation Kuva Brahma because the Void Angel is weak to radiation damage when its armor is not stripped. And also, Radiation is pretty good against most factions. Um, you can actually make weird builds like Radiation Toxin or Radiation Heat pretty easily with that. But just go, keep going over the Necros build here. So basically, Perma Shield Gating and um, you know some, some Power Strength to make it so we run fast with Regen Molt, uh, which you, like I guess you don't really need. And then High Range to just desecrate the area. Equilibrium so we get health and uh, energy from every orb we see. Rolling guard in case for some reason you have to use it and to spoil because you might just be low on energy when the angel's just like chilling there and you don't want to not have your desecrate active. Desecrate is very, very important. And also remember on the steel path, you can't use energy pads like repeatedly. You can only use one per minute. So important there. We've also got Arcan Acceleration giving our Brahma more fire rate because we're always going to be critting. Arcan Avenger just for funsies. You could put something else there if you wanted to. And Prime Sure-Footed, pretty essential for this. If you don't have Prime Sure-Footed, you, uh, you, know, you can make it work some other way, but this is mainly for Prime Sure-Footed. Moving on to the Kuva Brahma, like I said, we have a radiation roll. You can make the toxin roll work, um, but the fun thing about the radiation roll is you can do radiation heat, which is not normally usable on other other uh, elemental types. If you're fighting Corpus, you can go uh, toxin for radiation toxin or something like that. But radiation heat is actually great. You don't even need a Bane mod because I'm not even paying attention if the faction changes, to be honest. So pretty good there. Primary Merciless gives you increased damage, increased ammo. Never really going to run out of ammo on the Brahma, especially with vigilante supplies. Kuva Ducor is not really used for this, but I was just trying out this new arcane. I'm still maxing them out. Uh, while overshields are active, 300% increased crit chance. I'm not going to say too much about that right now. Uh, we've got the Vastalok. I've got an attack speed Riven, so we can attack very quickly. And the big thing here is removing the Void Angel's armor of Shattering Impact. Uh, if you use the High Noon Stance, one of the hits has a combo where you can just fire off shots really, really fast. Matterai Focus School is... I'm not going to say essential, but we are doing Steel Path, Void Angels, so you're probably going to want it anyway. So you're going to want uh, Void Strike and then other stuff like Void Fuel and all that is going to give you increased damage for your Operator Amp. And the Amp we're using is the 777, uh, which is going to be Clamora, Propa, and uh, Certus. Like I said in the video like two days ago, you can really, you have flexibility on which uh, Amp Prisms you want, but the best ones seem to be, um, you know, the stuff that already was good, like... Uh, Clamora, Cantic is actually okay. Um, Lega didn't feel like it had that much DPS. Replock is really good. And we went over the video previously on that. So, another thing you can do for even more damage, Magus Melt. Every time you Void Dash, you get increased fire damage for your Operator uh, Amp. And it actually does work on the Void Angel, giving you increased damage further. Um, it, the, the problem with this is it's hard to remember to do it, at least for me, that didn't, someone that doesn't use Magus Melt that often. Remembering to Void Dash six times for our DPS is kind of annoying. You can honestly just take Magus Lockdown off if you have this new uh, arcane, which is going to be called, I think, Eternal Eradicate. Something like that. Uh, gives you Eternal Eradicate is actually for your amp. This is going to give you increased amp damage. I've heard this is actually pretty good. I haven't tested that thoroughly, but uh, that's some even more damage, potentially more uh, consistent than Virtuous Strike, which was used in the footage. Um, so, yeah, that is going to be some of the stuff to do. The Wisp build, just go really high power strength on Wisp, guys. Um, I'm actually going to show you the, the next level of strats as well. We're going to show Hoba. Uh, I haven't made a full video on Hoba because I keep forgetting to. But let's just say um, Hoba is ridiculous, okay? Hoba is my on-call crew member. Uh, the level, the max level crew member that you can get from uh, Railjack Intrinsics. So, um, yeah. What, what he does is he destroys everything. So we're going to go to the uh, the clan dojo so I can show you that because you can actually look at it in your ship, unfortunately. And while we're there, I'm actually going to show you how to utilize the um, the Vastalock combo to fully strip enemy armor very quickly. Because it's, it's, it's a weird combination chain. You do like light attack into forward light attack, and then you just keep doing that over and over again. So, um, yeah. 
Do this while you can, guys. These RK, this is actually a good plat farm, a good Steel Essence farm, like I said. It seems like the Acolytes can spawn tw like, as early as like 10, 20 seconds in. Okay, don't tell anyone. But um, yeah, do it before it gets nerfed. Like, I, I don't use that type of terminology very frequently, but like I said, there's a reason this video is coming out later in the day. I wanted to make sure nothing got hot fixed before I made this. So go to your, uh, your Railjack, or your Dry Dock, I guess this is called. And once you hire these elite on-call crew members, you can call them down in mission and give them your Kuva Zars and your Brahmas and all that stuff. So, actually, I don't think they can equip bows, so maybe not Brahmas. So, you've got Hoba right here. He is the dude. He's got five combat, giving him 200% increased damage, five endurance, giving him some extra shield capacity and health. Um, he's also got a special ability. When he gets a kill, he will actually heal me. And I've given him a Kuva Zar. He probably should have a Radiation Kuva Zar, but he has a Toxin one right now. And Riven mods do not work on these guys. We did test it on stream. So make a special on-call build with like just basically raw damage, crit, some fire rate too because they reload the entire Zara magazine at once. Um, and there you go. That's Hoba for you. Um, now we're going to show how the combo thing works on fully stripping enemy armor really quickly. Um, it, it's not essential at all. An attack speed for the Vast Lock is definitely not essential. Um, but it is something you can do. So, And we can actually just do a quick run through of a Void Angel on the Steel Path. Actually, maybe this is a this is a squad farm. So if you want to if you want to DPS his shield down as a squad, what you should do first DPS phase to make sure you're skipping that orb phase every time. You have four people in your squad, all with void strike and like really good amps. Okay, for the first DPS phase when you go into the void realm, have two people pop their uh, void strike. Also, we're just looking for the we're looking for the angel right now. Um, have two people pop the void strike for the first DPS phase. You will be able to kill it probably. Here we go. You will be able to kill it probably with two people using Void Strike on the first phase. On the second phase, um, have the other two people use their Void Strike. And I'm going to call on Hoba right now too. So we're going to strip his armor. Hoba's going to kill him and spawn camp him. Alright, now that he's down, let's strip his armor. So, light attack uh, into forward light attack. And I got impaled by the spikes. Not too bad on the steel path. We're just trying to remove his armor so he's very easy to kill afterwards. Okay. This is more of a squad a squad build, so I'm just showing how it would work solo. So I did not mag his melt there, so I already am like not doing as good as I should be. Let's void dash a couple times here. Another good thing for DPS phase. Wait to shoot until he starts swinging his arms. When he swings his arms, he will not interrupt. Here we go. Oh, I got lasered. Okay, so th this is just like a realistic uh, you know, interpretation of this. Wait until he swings his arms to shoot out lasers. He will not interrupt. Here we go. While he's swinging those arms, that's your solo DPS right there. So if I would have done that better... We would, have, we would have taken him down in uh, solo with, with um, the, the 777. So, you know, it's not too bad if you mess it up. Make sure you apply, apply your uh, Void debuff as well. I'm just, like, kind of doing this live, so. Tier 7 Amp has run out of energy. And you could probably see some heat procs there, too, from me using Magus Melt. If he goes all that, that far out, you can just Void Dash to him. And I am solo Necros. You, you can technically get quad loot as solo Necros. It's just really low RNG if you don't have a, a mod drop booster. And as you see, he got spawn camped by Hoba there. Hoba just shot him as soon as he was damageable, and we just he got one shot. Since I was going so slow, we have... Um, it looks like we have uh, Void Strike back. We're going to wait for energy to come back. And then we're going to wait for the swing. By the way, Brief Respite does work on, uh, on operators right now. Damn, we almost got him. So yeah, I mean, solo is a little bit less good than, than squad. Like, if I was in squad, we probably would have already extracted. So, yeah, this is just a realistic look at this. I don't want to, like, lead you guys astray here. And also, I'm really bad at remembering Magus Melt. See, he's heat proc right now, taking damage over time from the heat proc. He might actually die to the heat proc in space. All right. So that is the final phase. Hobo's about to finish him off, and then we'll see if we get the quad loot. I'm not going to probably finish this mission, because there's one more thing I want to show you. We actually have Necros Jr. here, who is the... Um... Okay, so see, I got double pinions and an arcane solo. Did we get two arcanes? We only got one arcane. So, like I said, being in the steel path increases the arcane drop rate, but having a mod drop booster gives you guaranteed double arcanes. If, if you're on the steel path as well. So it's pretty hilarious. Um... I, I kind of want that arcane so we could finish it out, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm doing my my due diligence due diligence and show you guys the whole the whole like farming setup. So, if your Necros Desecrate 54% doesn't go off, 
you could potentially bring the, the Chesta Kubra, I think it's called. I don't remember the names of these Kubras, but it's this one. The one that has the ability called Retrieve, I believe. Um, I'd never use this thing. You can bring it for some, you know, like p potential placebo effect. We had two of them last night, and we never, we always got double drops when we had the mod booster. Kubra has a 45% chance to scavenge additional loot from a fallen enemy. Does not stack with Necro's Desecrate, but I brought it anyway just in case it does work. Resource chance boosters do not apply to this, guys. They are not resources. They are mods. And uh, you cannot, you can never get more than two arcanes from one, uh, from one angel, okay? So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm, I'm hoping I didn't forget anything important. Uh, the Wisp build, like I said, the Wisp build is not too crazy. Don't worry about it. You can put whatever you want on there. Um, Molt is good for increased survivability and speed. Roar for increased damage. It will, I think it works on on-call crew members. I've got Eclipse for even more damage. Just basically jam every power strength mod you have, every duration mod you have. What you can do to like make it so the mission's a little bit easier, like not to cast as many moats, you can put Fuse Reservoir down. Because these missions are supposed to go really, really fast, you could potentially put this on there um, and try that out. So, yeah, guys, I'll see you next time. Um, farm a lot this weekend if you want these Arcanes. Like I said, these Arcanes are really strong. Just looking at some of them, uh, like, the, the potential for build crafting and stuff is awesome. Like, I love what they've done with these Arcanes. Um, I think one of the sets is called, yeah, so it's Eternal Eradicate for the Operator gives you increased amp damage. There is um, Molt Efficiency, so the one we just didn't extract with. This will give you increased duration while you have shields active, and it stacks with 36%. This one is basically a minimum power for your frame on ability, an Operator Ability energy, uh, an operator ability Cast. 45% ability strength for your next Warframe ability. You can use that with like Roar or Saren's Toxic Lash for even more damage. And there's a bunch more too. Um, Cascadia, I think these are for like secondaries. Yeah, good stuff. I'll see you guys uh, with more videos coming out soon, of course. Um, I'm going to probably just relax tonight, like I said. Enjoy the farming while you can. Uh, and if they nerf this, it's some of the most fun I've had in Warframe in a while, so that would be unfortunate. All right, guys. Bye.